Mayor Jackie Long, newly elected president of the Berkeley County Board of Education. Jackie, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. What well, do you think should happen here? Uh, well, I'm a little bit disappointed in John. That Thank you, Jackie. Not, yeah, <laughs> that you're not upholding your end of the bargain. And I, I couldn't believe if you uh, bid on that yes. and, and would pay for that uh, despicable. Yes. Uh, it so. was not advertised as being the despicable character. It's implied in a Gilstrap no. book, The, the <laughs> Despicable book. Die. Everybody's despicable. So I think after this you might get killed off. Well, it, in the future. No, 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 no. 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 There's one, one and done, one, one shot. That's well, it. So it's a. That, I'm with Rob. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah. You okay, just want to come back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a United Maybe I shouldn't have said one. that. I, I have a Jackie got the Long. questions yet. <laughs> I, could have, I could get a Jackie Long character. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of Jackie Long, uh, Jackie's husband Ron always sends goodies in with Jackie. Although I assume I assume sometimes you bring goodies on your own too. Is that true? Uh, they're mostly from him. Okay. So yeah, we got muffins today. I, I accept they're from us both. So. Yep, I'll take that as yeah. well. Yeah. Blueberry and banana muffins. Yeah. Well, Thank blueberry you. muffins and banana muffins, not blueberry and banana muffins. Yeah. Not com not. Listen, Words your, matter. your days of correcting me <laughs> on what's proper are now over, Mr. Gilstrap. They're done. You breached a contract. You broke the trust. I don't know if I can believe anything you say anymore. Are you even who you say you are? <laughs> so, well, you know, I, I, I was up front with it. When I, did you I become came, Mr. Softy? Nice guy. He's I, a nice guy. I can't make Bill Despicable. He's a scion of the yeah. community. He's still trying to make up to me for uh, when he called me, uh, giving softball questions to the uh, to the governor that okay. one time. Okay, you're, you're dead again. That's, that's fine. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> There's something going on here because Hornby the other day said to me, you guys are kind of going rough on Bill on the Friday shows. Take it easy on him. Good. Everybody Thanks, likes Mike. Bill. Thanks, Take it easy on Bill. And I said, who? What? What? There's something weird with the universe going Man, on. Man, right I now. sure like Hornby. He <laughs> says that. <laughs> this defense of Stubblefield is troubling. Save the rough questions for Bill. Jackie, congratulations to you. You've been elected as the new president of the Berkeley County Board of Education. Thank you. Yeah, long time coming, I'd say, right? You know, I've only been on the board since 2021. So. Well, I'm talking about your whole career in education. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's so surprising from where I once started mm -hmm. to where I won't say ended up because I'm where you not Where you've arrived. Where I've arrived. Yeah, that's yeah. a better word. For uh, it, so. Tell everybody your resume when it comes to education in the state, the different ways you've served. Uh, well, I was um, – I, I, I served service personnel in Berkeley County for – 25 years as our president here, but as a coordinator of service personnel for Berkeley County Schools also, uh, I actually started as a secretary years ago and worked my way up to that. Mm -hmm. And then um, as I was uh, working as in the central office, I was elected state president of the West Virginia School Service Personnel and stayed uh, and held that office for 12 years. And uh, I was a full-time working president for the last four or five, six years, which uh, according to code, uh, you are on a leave of absence, mm -hmm. but still employed by your board of ed. So um, it, it's, been, it's been a great experience. So I felt like I helped a lot of people and I learned so much, you know, w working with the legislative process is a different animal than yep. anybody ever thinks or that you'll ever experience. So and you've worked with the school building authority? Yeah, I've worked with the School Building Authority. I, when I retired, I consulted with the West Virginia Department of Education, uh, helping revise their state service personnel competency testing, which I was very proud of. So, And I've served on many, 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 many committees with the Department of Ed over the years, traveled around with them, um, uh, spoke with them on many occasions uh, doing um, not so much consulting, but when they would go out and try to explain uh, bills that involve service personnel especially, uh, I was able to help them immensely because uh, actually nobody understands, I, I won't say no one, but it's very difficult for uh, many individuals to understand the West Virginia Code on school employees. Mm -hmm. So even when they think they do, they don't and, and it can be interpreted in many different ways and that's why grievances are filed I'm sure mm -hmm. so 
in regards to Pat Murphy, uh, was it a decision Pat made that he did not want to be president any longer? Yes, that was Pat's decision. We didn't throw him out. It so. was not a coup. No one no. suspected <laughs> you of leading a coup against Pat. I know you guys have a great relationship. Yes. Uh, Our board has a great relationship. Oh, very much so. We are. Yes. We have very many different opinions, but we come together and do what's best for students. And, and let me come to your employees. defense uh, as a board as well, because there were some comments about transparency a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the BOE in our comment section. And this board, in terms of uh, being transparent with the media, is way more transparent, head and shoulders above anything else that's come before it in my time doing this program as a board you folks are very accessible. Obviously, there's times when your lawyers say you can't talk about this, that you can't talk about it. I get that. Uh, we all probably go through something like that at some point in our careers or lives where that's just the deal. Uh, but otherwise, you folks are out in public. With well, stuff. as you know, anytime you text me or call me or ask me a question, I always answer you or try to get you the answer. Mm -hmm. That's our goal is to be transparent. If there's something that someone thought we weren't transparent about, I... I wouldn't know what it is. Um, I mean, we it's all there. So if you want to know, ask me. Bill, if, you want to know, ask I like me. the answer, but I'll tell you. You may get what you want right now. Bill, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, you're the chairman. Who's the Deb's chairman? Melissa Power. Melissa Power. Okay, yeah. so the two of you. I think it's, yeah. it's president and vice president. Yes. President and vice president. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Dr. Sachs is on board? Yes, he when? started July 1st. Okay. You'll, have, you'll bring him on the show hopefully pretty soon? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's a well-spoken uh, person, so I think yes. he probably I, should. Actually, Carla Trotman, who's still in the office, uh, is in charge of scheduling those, yes. and, and she sent me uh, about a week and a half ago a full, almost a full-year calendar of Dr. Sachs' appointments. He will be appearing regularly on the program every couple weeks or so uh, throughout the course of this upcoming school year, and uh, even in the summer, we'll get started with some appointments this summer, too, Good. with him. Good. So he'll be with us often. Uh, Jackie, through the through the last several years, few years, there's been a lot of issues that the Board of Education, the school systems have to face. Uh, some we continue to recurring issues we keep hearing about. Others we have we hear less about now, such as the SROs in the schools, the uh, the hardening of the schools, the the discipline in the schools, the academic uh, failures that we have. Uh, you've been with the board, so it's none of these are new, but what, what's going to be your direction? What are you going to, uh, uh, to look at to, uh, uh, to put your, the, the current board stamp of your, of your involvement? Where are you going? Well, my goal, and I feel the rest of the board's goal is, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn for them, is to concentrate on our academics. Um, we can't keep getting lower. There's only one way to go, and that's up. And we have to, we have to ensure that our test scores get uh, improved and actually you know test scores saying talking about test scores is one thing but the actuality is we want students when they graduate high school to be able to go into college with the knowledge that they should have um, when they get out of there uh, you, going to college and taking dummy courses to uh, get through is is just not cutting the mustard to me I mean there and it doesn't start just in high school it starts um, intermediate school elementary school you know we have to get on task with this Good. so that's my goal this is one of Pat's big concerns over the years just artificial promotion just to whether someone's qualified to be promoted the next grade or not it's their material they were they were automatically promoted so. well I have concerns with that also yeah. mm -hmm. By the way, uh, Melissa Power will join us Wednesday morning at 8, uh, the new vice president of the board. John? So, <clears throat> lofty goals. How do you, We've heard so many times on this show why these goals can't be accomplished. We have issues with getting families involved. We have teacher pay issues. We have all of these. All of those situations still exist. We're not going to manufacture more money for teachers. So what is your plan to accomplish those goals given the current – set of circumstances well saying all that I realize that their students have many difficult issues that I didn't have when I was a child but sometimes we make excuses 
And I think that, you know, the time for excuses are over with, and co we're no longer in COVID. Um, we, we have to, um, when these kids don't have uh, what they need behind them to move forward, then they should be retained. If they need extra help in the evenings or um, we have to do tutoring or whatever we have to do, we have to provide it. You know, we're in a contract with model schools, which is uh, helping our uh, teachers and staff um, to maybe brush up their teaching skills a little bit or, or maybe go in a different direction that they haven't been with their classroom uh, management and things like that. So, um, you know, I'm hopeful that uh, we we've, we've have great employees out there, and I don't want anybody to think that we don't. So well, I, I think they're up for the process that we would like to see them to go through to get the kids where they need to be. John, before so, you follow up real quick, the intersection of West Ray Street and North Raleigh Street is currently closed due to a traffic accident, so avoid that area if you can. West Race and North Raleigh closed because of a traffic accident. Go ahead. So... If we draw that line in the sand and say, yeah, we're going to keep keep kids back, we're going to accomplish these things, does the uh, Berkeley County School Board, with the cooperation of the new superintendent, have the authority to do that, or is that going to run afoul of directives from the state? Well, our policy says that the um, teacher has the, the uh, responsibility to make the decision to hold the student back. So the teacher, the principal, and... Um, and I, I'm sure the uh, central office gets involved sometimes. But, the, you know, the teacher knows best whether that child should move forward or not. They know whether that child's retained the information and, and the knowledge to move forward to the next grade, whether they're going to succeed in that grade or flounder. And that's what you don't want. I mean, just keep passing a student forward. And the more they go, the more behind they are. But that's always been the case. Yes, it is. has been the case. And we last Friday we one of the issues discussed was uh, banning phones, uh, cell phones from the from the schools. Is this something that you have the power to do in Berkeley County? Yes, we we can uh, ban cell phones. I I, th I think, uh, and I don't want to speak out of turn because that's that's this isn't the board's decision to make. If it comes to us, um, we will vote on that. But. Uh, it's a concern I have. I think it's a concern uh, some of the board members have about banning phones and uh, having phones out in their classroom. Is this under the purview of the superintendent or the board of education? It's under the purview of the superintendent okay. and the, the pupil service department. That goes through them. And it had, would take a policy change, which wouldn't be difficult. And I think... Um, that policy change would be something you would initiate, you as the Board of Education would initiate, well, is that right? Well, the, uh, the particular department that handles policies would initiate that for that issue would be pupil services. And as a matter of fact, I think there's a committee uh, on okay. that. Then it would come through to us. I, I have remained, I still remain a little confused, the respective role between you and the superintendent. You've been the Board of Education superintendent. I know you hired the superintendent, but once that happens, what role do you have? I thought you did. You established policy. He works for us, and we establish policy. Yes, but, we but do establish. We can tell if we want a cell phone policy established, we could tell them to work on that, which which has been discussed a little bit. You, you just don't draft the policy yourself. Exactly. You say work in this direction. And bring the policy back to us. Okay. I see. But you would you'd be the one that would approve the policy. Oh, definitely. The implement the policy. Yes. Do you do you has this subject been looked at in depth? Do you think it would be it certainly caused a lot of pushback among many people. Uh, and there as we've discussed before, there's certain disadvantages to it as far as in the case of emergency, how would you communicate? Uh, have you looked at it close enough to think this is something you wanna pursue, seriously? As a board, we haven't looked at it close enough. I think uh, w within the system, um, a particular department, they're looking at it, starting to look at it. That's that's what I know, yeah. um, how far that has went. I think they're getting ready to meet on something of that nature. 
you mentioned discipline. A, yeah, you mentioned approved. Well, of course, cell phones cut across the discipline, the academic, the whole bit. Uh, you mentioned improving academics. Uh, do you have specifics of how you would do that? No, if I did, I could probably go out on the road with that, um, how I would want to do that, because there's just so much to it. So I, you know, I, I leave that to the individuals that have that knowledge of how, to, of how to prove it. I know very much so that discipline plays a huge part of why our students aren't getting what they need to get. You can't have uh, students in class causing chaos even if it's one or two and the rest of the class isn't getting what they need to get There's you have a son who is principal of an alternative school in the county yes, correct um, uh, the cares academy cares yeah. academy right and At tuscarora and what is the situation there in regards of number of students uh, it can handle and and potential for growth in that as we have more problem um, students that need to be dealt with Around 10 to 15, I think it can handle, maybe. That maybe doesn't a seem like more. a lot. No, it doesn't seem like a lot. But, uh, and it's mostly um, kindergarten through third. It goes to fifth grade. But once, um, and I've questioned him about that, and the board has, why don't we have more intermediate students in there? And um, the CARES Academy team that works to place those students realizes that by the time it gets to that, the intermediate grade that students are have been um, placed in special needs or um, tested to that they might have another um, disability or something mm -hmm. like that special needs that they have been placed in a program that helps them instead of being placed in the cares academy so and that program will keep growing and growing that's, that's my question. What's the limitation? Is it a physical limitation as far as the, the building, the size of the building, the resources, number of teachers, or is there a limitation well, on the growth? Well, as, as the program grows, the staff could grow and the um, size could grow. But, right, you know, at, as at the moment it's at Tuscarora and there's two classrooms um, for use there, and I think maybe possibly could be three. I'm, I might speak out of turn with that, but uh, right now that's that that for the implementation it was two classrooms and um, I think two teachers and two aides. How do you handle and some RBTs and as, as the president of the board of education with a son who, in that position? How do you handle those issues in regards to uh, recusing yourself or voting on budgets and what have you? Uh, I recuse myself for everything that has to do with him. Um, and anyone on our board does the same thing. So I, one thing for sure, and I have always been this way, and probably more than I need to be, but anything that he's involved with, I stay so far away from that I, I don't want that imprint on anything that I've done that would maybe look like that I have favored him and in some instances it has been detrimental because I think it maybe I went too far with um, you know I'll, mm -hmm. that, I'll leave it at that sure. so Good what he, I want him to earn what he has because of what he is mm -hmm. not where I am and he feels the same way I'm going to go back to the cell phone thing for just a second. If we're worried about the distractions, that the obvious distractions of cell phones, doesn't every student have a computer or a tablet with him or her that poses the equal distraction? They're supposed to be on such and such a website doing such and such a thing, but in fact can be... Well, I'm not so sure they can get to everything on their tablet, so... Well, one would hope they can't get to everything. Yeah, but, but I mean, I, I would hope that the, the uh, technology department has many things blocked that they're used for what they're supposed to be used for and and I know at times they haven't been because those students have been punished for that so um, you know uh, that's why you have teachers and aides in classrooms that hopefully monitor that's as well as they can Jackie we have 60 seconds left a uh, chance for you to address our listeners in regards to what they can expect from the Board of Education with you in charge well I I'm I'm ha very pleased that I was elected as board president. As I said, we have a, a, a great board 
team there. Uh, Melissa will be the vice president, and I hope to make a few changes. I would like to shorten our board meetings some to um, – and working with the superintendent. I, I think sometimes when they get past 10 o'clock or so, we lose focus on everybody's tired and, and the staff's tired and it's uh, we we keep them too long. So um, I'm working with Dr. Sachs, he had a great suggestion that maybe we do a third board meeting as a work session and a monitoring session where uh, there are a couple items on there that we don't have to, that don't require board action that um, would l shorten our board meetings some. So things like that that I would like to um, implement and work with him on. Well, congratulations once again. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you to Ron for supplying the Stubblefield muffins <laughs> and Gillstrap muffins over there. Look at you just grinning. Just grinning, Enjoyed Bill. Them. It's Enjoyed a good them morning really. for you so far. <laughs>